Hi, my name is Ya Qingo, and I'm a researcher at Wageningen University. In this clip, we are going to discuss how commodities are mapped using remote sensing techniques. You, Johannes, and Alina also contributed to the contents and in the organization of this knowledge clip. We aim to answer the following questions. How to accurately map the extent of commodity farms by segregating them from natural forest? What information can be extracted from remote sensing imagery to fulfill this purpose? Given that different remote sensing sensors generate images with distinct characteristics, which dataset to choose for the commodity type that is of interest to you? Before we dive into technical specifications for various remote sensing techniques, I would like you to look at those photos of different types of tree plantations for agroforestry and think about the following questions. How different are they from a lateral forest? What are the identifying characteristics of each commodity? For example, Due to the distinct characteristics of the crown shape, oil palm is easy to be differentiated from a lateral forest. Rubber plantation is another good example where its crown shape, combined with a unique planting pattern for harvesting rubber, creates a distinct spatial pattern. However, tree plantations for other commodity types may not have a distinct crown shape or planting pattern. In this case, the texture information and the vertical profile of the landscape are important for mapping those tree plantations. For example, monococo tree plantations normally have a tree height of 5 meters, which creates a smooth canopy surface, whereas shaded cocoa can only be detected from its vertical profile. While shaded cocoa plantations normally have two layers, a top tree layer for shade and a layer of cocoa plantations below. The vertical profile of a lateral forest normally has multiple layers, consisting from low bushes to various height of trees. Let's explore the landscape from the view of remote sensing imagery. Can you identify all your palm, full sun cocoa, and shaded cocoa using the characteristics discussed before? Let's room out further and try again. Did you differentiate those land use classes? Oil palm farms are characterized by uniformed grid with points, which are the tree crowns, whereas full sun cocoa has a relatively smooth canopy surface, resulting from similar tree height. The shaded cocoa normally has a rougher surface due to the two layer structure. Oil palm and full sun cocoa are comparatively easy to identify. When the canopy is relatively closed, we need some extra information to be able to identify which commodity is present. For example, areas around the full sun cocoa has a relatively closed canopy. We know from fieldwork that this is shaded cocoa, but it is difficult to see from the image alone. This brings us to the next topic, what information can remote sensing imagery provide for commodity mapping? The answer to this question depends on the type of sensor on board. In the following slides, I'll be listing key advantages and disadvantages of optical, radar, LIDAR, and drone-based approaches, starting with optical data. Optical data is often used to extract the greenness and the spectral or textural information of the imaged surface. Although with very high resolution optical data, you can see through the canopy gaps, but it cannot penetrate through a closed canopy. So optical data is not sensitive to structure. Optical data is best for tree plantations which have a unique special pattern, such as oil palm, rubber, and full sun cocoa. The resolution of optical imagery greatly affects the ability of that image to be used for commodity mapping. For example, with 10 meter resolution Sentinel-2 imagery, you can extract texture information to segregate open forest, forest, and full sun cocoa. While with 3 meter resolution planet scope data, you can even see the gaps between trees in an open forest. 
more assuring for segregating open forest with other land use types. The biggest advantage for using radar data is its sensitivity to structure. A long wavelength radar backscatter can penetrate through the tree canopy. From the coherence and phase information, you can also extract tree height from a pair of radar imagery. Radar data is not affected by clouds, making it possible to generate a full time series in the cloudiest areas of the world. However, the data itself is difficult to interpret and requires extra processing to accurately extract the information you need. Reader data adds valuable information for mapping tree plantations that have a unique structure, such as shaded cocoa. LIDAR or structure from motion data can provide a full vertical profile, but it normally needs to be fused with another dataset to generate a full coverage for the whole region. In summary, we can segregate different commodity types by its unique spatial pattern or vertical profile. From optical data, we can extract word to word texture information. Radar imagery provides structural information about the landscape. LIDAR and structure from motion data provides a full vertical profile, but normally not available at the regional scale. Refer to those links for more information. Thank you.